Hi, this is episode 61 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. If you're new to object-oriented programming, a natural question to ask is, what does instantiation mean? Like many other concepts in the development world, instantiation is actually a relatively straightforward concept that suffers from having an overly complex name. Before we dive into the code, let's analyze a real world example of instantiation. And a quick spoiler alert, if you understand what it takes to build a house, you already understand instantiation. Let's imagine that you're building a house. One of the first tasks you'd most likely do is build a blueprint for the house. This blueprint would contain attributes and features of the house, such as the dimensions for each room, how the plumbing will flow, and essentially every attribute of the house. Now, let me ask you a dumb question. Is a blueprint for the house the actual house? No, of course not. It simply lists out the attributes and design for the how the home's gonna be created. So after the blueprint is completed, the actual home can be built. Dare I say, the home can be instantiated. From an object-oriented programming perspective, a class is the blueprint for an object. A class simply describes what the object will look like and how it will behave. Therefore, instantiation is a process of taking a class definition and creating an object you can use in a program. If it's still a little fuzzy, that's fine. Let's look at a code example. I'm gonna build this example in Ruby. However, instantiation has the same behavior in essentially every object-oriented language. For this example, we're going to have an invoice class. Inside of the class definition, we have attributes such as a customer and total, along with some behavior such as printing out an invoice summary. Now, if we create an instance of invoice and store it in a variable, as shown here, I've used instantiation to take a class and build an object based on the class definition. And with this process in place, I can use the object to perform tasks, such as printing out the summary. So at its core, instantiation is a process of taking a class and creating an object from it that you can actually use in your program. I hope that this has been a helpful guide for answering the question of how instantiation works and that you now can feel confident on using it on your own programs. For a deeper dive into object-oriented programming techniques, in the show notes I've included a link to some tutorials on object-oriented programming in Ruby where you can extend your knowledge and build some real-world projects. I've also included a link to the code I reviewed in this guide.